Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock with part two in the thank you journal that I started last week. And this is the cover that was made. So you can go back and watch that once, the previous video. And this time I'm going to show you a different watercolor technique and one of the journaling pages inside. Ignore the blue one on the right. That's the one that we're going to work on next week. But for now, we're going to be working on this yellow one. And I'm just taking the paints and applying them in any random way. If you apply them in a random controlled way like this, you'll get a little more interesting patterns than if you do in another way that I'll show you in a few minutes. I didn't get all of this filmed exactly appropriately, so yeah. <laughs> Stuff happens when you're filming things, and I've been trying to get ready for this Bible study that I'm teaching, so there you go. I only got parts of some of it, so you'll get a smattering here. But I'm putting plenty of water down. I'm letting lots of this color from the dot card. It's a Daniel Smith dot card. You can purchase your own for just a couple of bucks if you want to try one of these. Uh, the paint that's on there is plenty enough for this whole journal. And then I just kind of let all of that paint, nice, thick, juicy, wet paint, sit there. And I got out a piece of saran wrap, just regular old household saran wrap, and tear off a big sheet of it and crumple it up and squish it so that it's, I don't know, a little pliable. You don't want anything smooth going on this. If you did something smooth, it would be not worth putting down. But I'm going to get it crinkly so I can actually work with it once I put it down on the wet section of paper. So I'm going to kind of make it big enough to fit here. And then I'm going to just put it down and squish it and let little patterns develop. You can sort of see them when you're looking at the little piece of saran wrap and then let it completely dry a couple hours, like because it's not going to air dry as fast as watercolor would because it's sealed in by the plastic. So let it sit there for a while, go have dinner, come back later and then peel it off. Now the peeling off part of this one is the part I did not get on camera. So we're going to look at a different one that I made. This is the one that I made for class. And here I blobbed paint on the whole thing and then ended up peeling it off. And you can see the kinds of patterns that it'll leave. And it's still a little bit damp. So once you take the plastic off, of course, now it has to really air dry. So be careful of that. If you tape off your edges like I'm doing here, make sure you peel the tape low to the edges of the paper. Don't peel straight upward because you could rip the paper. And depending on the quality of the watercolor paper you're using, this is super cheap stuff. Most sheets of watercolor paper are like five to eight dollars. And this one was like two dollars. So it's really rough paper to work with, but it's fine for a journal. So what I did, and of course I forgot to film the first part of this as well, is to go around like I did on the cover and start tracing around the edges. And here I had a whole bunch of interesting stuff off to one side, which left me a great nice big area that I'm going to do some journaling in. And the rest of it, I made it, it kind of started looking like trees. So I added some tree trunks to a few trees and some ground underneath of them and just random stuff. It looks like a big mushroom up in the left hand corner. And I'm just, as I'm working through this, I'm thinking about whatever the scripture is that I'm going to be praying about for this Bible study for this particular week. You can be doing this about any scripture you are studying right now. You don't have to do any of the scriptures that I'm doing. But I just started doodling into this. And then I used the big area in there for doing all of the journaling portion. And for journaling, there are a thousand different ways to approach it. And since this is a thank you journal, I'm approaching each of the scriptures that I'm praying about in this from a perspective of gratitude. So here's what I wrote in mine. Thank you, Lord, for creating a world in which you intended and do use faulty people to accomplish your will. I hadn't ever thought about Jeremiah being a reluctant prophet, saying he's too young. And if you read Jeremiah 1, you'll see the, the verses that I'm talking about. But you told him not to say that. You told him not to speak ill of those whom the Lord will choose. What a lesson. You told him just to go where you tell him and say the words that you put in his mouth and you even touched his lips. So yeah, I can do that. I want to do your will. And I want to stop disqualifying your chosen vessel, even if I don't feel prepared. 
You aren't saying that being chosen changes the ill preparedness that I know exists. But you're saying that that doesn't matter. And maybe, just maybe, that's just the qualification you want for the task at hand. And what really struck me in this is that God didn't tell Jeremiah that all of a sudden the qualifications for a prophet were lowered and a young person could go be a prophet. He just said, don't say that. Don't say you're too young. And when God called me to teach a Bible study, or he called me to write a book, or he calls me to do something, and I'm like, oh, God, I can't do that. I'm not smart enough. I'm not studied enough. I don't know Hebrew and Greek. How could I possibly teach anybody anything? He's not saying that all of a sudden the qualifications for doing that are lowered to my crazy standards and and that suddenly I'm qualified to do that. What he's saying is don't say whatever that thing is. Don't be putting yourself down as a servant of God. I've chosen you and this is what I'm telling you to do. Here's the instructions. I'm going to give you exactly the words to say, and I want you to just go do that thing. And that I can do, that I can handle. I get really intimidated when I feel like God's telling me that I have to go back to school and study Greek and Hebrew and all that in order to be important enough and smart enough to do something for him. And that's not what he's saying here. Those things certainly couldn't hurt. It probably would make me a little smarter to go back and do all that study. But God doesn't need that in order to accomplish his will. He just needs a vessel who's willing to go where he says to go and say what he says to say, and that's it. And I'm grateful for that. So that's what's in my journal. So whatever it is you choose to put in your journal for today, go have fun with that. And I will see you again next week with another background and another piece of journaling. See you later. Bye-bye.